Hello everybody and welcome to my channel, The Real Super Sam. This is a special complete history of video and I hope you enjoy. Today is July 20th, the day I started making my videos on complete history of comic characters. And this one, today, is on a Spider-Man slash Daredevil character with a very well written and cool story like he's much more than just a vigilante. This guy has his own henchmen and call always being an intimidating threat but understanding and the farthest thing from an insane criminal, believe me. I can't wait for you all to learn about this guy, probably another forgotten Spider-Man role character who I am just jumping to a complete history of video for, so let's get started. Black Tarantula first appeared in The Amazing Spider-Man issue 419, January 1997. After hearing about the Kingpin's fall after Daredevil issue 300, and that Rose and Hammerhead are the only ones who can take the Underworld away from the leader now, Don Fortunato, Black Tarantula feels that now is the best time to extend his domain. The Rose has recently made a deal with the Black Tarantula and talks about what he knows of the character. He is not to be trusted and he has a cult that worships him like a god. When Delilah goes to speak to the Black Tarantula, his men open fire on them. Spider-Man is there thanks to Ben Yurik's information and fights the guy posing as Black Tarantula called El Uno. He gets caught in an explosion at the end, with Spider-Man questioning if he was the real Black Tarantula. The last page shows Black Tarantula's henchmen telling him what happened. He was in the next three issues, Amazing Spider-Man 420 to 422. We learn in issue 420, the Black Tarantula is in Argentina right now and is still mad El Uno has failed and vanished. Chespro, his assistant, is putting up the Christmas tree and he yells at him. El Uno is still alive actually and surprise attacks Delilah as they fight over the rooftops. But Delilah wins and the Rose sends El Uno's head to Black Tarantula with a wreath made of roses. In issue 421, Black Tarantula contacts another member of his cult, Madame Qua, and her ninjas called True Believers. They say they have fought Spider-Man before, so Black Tarantula says to them to treat him like an inconvenience. In the next issue, Black Tarantula's new plan is to assassinate Joe Robertson of the Daily Bugle and blame him on the Rose. Black Tarantula says that Robertson is an old colleague of his. Next came issue 424. After Spider-Man and Elektra and his henchmen in New York, Black Tarantula decides to go there himself. Then he was in The Amazing Spider-Man 427 and 428. Black Tarantula is in New York, staying in the Plaza Hotel. Madame Qua's brother is using his power to help the Rose bring the original Dr. Octopus back to life. Black Tarantula lets this continue because he thinks he can get Doc Ock to work for him if he wants that to happen, and his assistant leaves for Black Tarantula's personal matter, which it seems is watching Mary Jane in secret. Later, Black Tarantula sneaks up on Delilah and beats her up to near death, then heals her to send a message to the Rose. His next big appearance, his real big appearance, was in The Amazing Spider-Man issue 432, which was his next appearance. Today, Black Tarantula has come to the States and busts into a meeting with Don Fortunato and the Rose, where he acts very polite but intimidating, and so Fortunato kicks out the Rose to talk to this newcomer. Don Fortunato is inclined to welcome Black Tarantula to the USA. He only needs to beat up the amazing Spider-Man to get some rule here. So suddenly the Spider-Man, the Black Tarantula throws a chimney at him, and before they fight he tells him that he has no personal malice against him. Spider-Man assumes that Black Tarantula is here because of Norman Osborn's son being kidnapped, but Black Tarantula tells him it is not. Spider-Man just tells some great jokes while fighting this guy who rips through his webbing and is as strong as he is. I mean, Black Tarantula here apparently was titled from a spider before Spider-Man was. They f their fight even leads to Black Tarantula falling off with a roof on, part of on top of him, but he just punches out and after Spider-Man talks about looking for a missing child, Tarantula screams at him, wondering what he is talking about. Tarantula knows about the bounty for Spider-Man's head, but this isn't about that at all, and the rogue even tells him what he is doing is even harder, because knowing that Spider-Man is trying to save Norman Osborn's son, even though Norman is his enemy. Instead of killing Spider-Man, Black Tarantula just takes his mask and tells him to disappear after he saves the child, then he just leaves. Then he was in issues 434 to 436. Don Fortunato has called the Black Tarantula and the Rose in order to convince them to put their past grudges behind them. However, the Rose is furious that Black Tarantula has been given control of hijackings that happen in the city. In order to smooth things over, the Black Tarantula offers to pay Rose a monthly fee to compensate for the loss of his business operations. On the very last page, we learn Black Tarantula did not come to Manhattan to get into the criminal underworld. Instead, he was motivated by the desire for vengeance. 
Don Fortunato visits the Black Tarantula and marvels over the fact that the South American mobster stole Spider-Man's mask and now has it on display. The Black Tarantula is growing impatient with the fact that the Rose hasn't arrived yet. To pass time, Don Fortunato decides to entertain his partner with a legend he once heard. He concludes this tale by saying that some believe that the immortal warrior was still alive to this day. Before the Tarantula can answer, the Rose finally arrives. When Black Tarantula goes back to his hideout, it seems the story Don Fortunato told was about him, or at least the Black Tarantula's legacy. And in issue 436, it opens up with Black Tarantula, the hybrid robot killed droid, and Spider-Man. Black Tarantula tells Spider-Man to leave, as this has nothing to do with him. We see the Black Tarantula by himself easily take care of Killdroid and tries to kill the guy, but Spider-Man saves him. So, we then learn of the Black Tarantula, this Black Tarantula's origin. His real name is Carlos La Murto, and his family, of all ancestries, the son grows up to become the next fighter to be called the Black Tarantula, and the woman Mary Jane is friends with, Marina, is Carlos's ex, and they have a kid together who she doesn't want to become the next heir to the Black Tarantula legacy. Black Tarantula then later has to bust through the gates of Don Fortunato's hideout where his wife and MJ are hiding and that's when Spider-Man shows up to stop him and why Killdroid was fighting him. Spider-Man jumps on Black Tarantula's face having a new mask since Black Tarantula still has the one he ripped off on display. While they fight, to get into the hideout, he throws a car that kills some of Don Fortunato's henchmen which surprises Spider-Man since, well, he just committed some cold-blooded murder right there. The Rogue is a real threat now. He really has had all the lives of the other Black Tarantulas to practice and learn from, so this may be one of Spider-Man's greatest battles ever, honestly. Spider-Man learns about why Black Tarantula is here for his son, and Black Tarantula is almost fighting for death since the, of Black Tarantula's name isn't passed down from father to son again. Their 700 year legacy will end now. Spider-Man puts in a great fight and even harms Black Tarantula, but in the end it gets beaten and hurt so much he can barely crawl. The end is very surprising though, since Black Tarantula just walks off, the battle is over when he sees he can't just steal his son away from his mother. He just walks calmly away from a defeated Spider-Man and proclaims that he is still a Black Tarantula, having Spider-Man alone by the only man who has survived his wrath. And then he was in Spider-Man Unlimited, issue 22. Black Tarantula is here because Roxxon is using Scorpion to see if they can create an army of super-powered soldiers then sell them, and Black Tarantula wants in. He doesn't fight Spider-Man here, he's just used as a gang leader type character. He started being in Daredevil comics in Daredevil Volume 2, Issue 82, years later. In this story, Matt Murdock is in prison and the people say that he's Daredevil with no proof. Black Tarantula goes to Murdock to offer him into his gang, since most people want him dead, but he thinks that Matt's more useful to him alive. Some of Black Tarantula's men actually fought Kingpin in the shower but lost in 6 seconds. Anyway, Matt says he's not Daredevil but Black Tarantula doesn't believe him. He leaves Murdoch without option, and then leaves. Then he was in issues 85 and 86. At the beginning, Carlos Black Tarantula goes up to Murdoch to talk to him again, basically about how prison is a completely different place and how Matt needs to go after the Kingpin. In the end, Black Tarantula, since Murdoch didn't do what he wanted, kills, tries to kill the Kingpin. Their plan is what they light up the prison, and they will also murder Daredevil and the Kingpin then. So during their crazy breakout attempt, some people get Bullseye out and Black Tarantula attacks him. And it doesn't go his way as Bullseye throws him off the walkway below to his apparent death. He was then in Daredevil Volume 2 Annual 1. In this story, the Black Tarantula is released from prison and wants to go straight, so he goes to Matt Murdock's place to ask him if he has a job opening and Matt decides to hire him as security. Carlos goes off on his own to do some rough detective work, but Matt finds him doing this and forces him to let him get the guy go. Later, Daredevil and Black Tarantula as vigilantes team up and fights the underworld. After that, seeing all the money on the table, tempts Carlos to steal it for himself to help his neighborhood, but Daredevil stops him. After finding out this thug called Loco from the suicide of an old lady, he goes after him but gets hurt. He sees he's not the man he used to be. This leader was a vengeful former recruit of Black Tarantula's years earlier. Carlos had personally invited him into his gang, naming him Little Loco. I guess things change. This causes him to snap and brutally murder all these thugs. The drugs that kept him seen are wearing off. The true nature of the Black Tarantula was back. He killed Loco, the leader, by choking him with the money he was paid for killing an old woman. Daredevil showed up at the scene asking what Black Tarantula had done. Then, Black Tarantula tells him that he planned on taking the rest of the money from the hideout. Daredevil attempts to stop him but was knocked out with a single punch from him. But before leaving, Black Tarantula uses his powers to heal the harm he just caused. 
The last page shows that Black Tarantula is back in the city town he loves to stay and protect it. Next came the story, Daredevil Blood of the Tarantula. In this comic, we see Black Tarantula in full costume taking down some criminals protecting his town. Yet, Black Tarantula has become a hero to the town and helps them all out with their problems while fighting crime. Today, it seems like his wife and son are in town and he runs to catch them, but they disappear, leaving him very confused. We then get a flashback to when Carlos Lalmercho was getting the powers of the Black Tarantula passed on down to him. Tonight though, Black Tarantula gets ambushed by some guys, but the shock is that they were part of his own gang earlier when he was in Argentina and they knock him out. He, walk he wakes up later tied to a wooden pillar and the man who reveals himself as Carlos' cousin wakes him and Black Tarantula breaks from his bonds after being tortured and runs away. All the way to Matt Murdock's apartment for help. At the end, when it comes to Black Tarantula's story, he stops at nothing to end his cousin's attack on New York, scaring the bejesus out of him. And yeah, he gets killed, and everything blamed on him. Unfortunately, when the rest of the gang hears about this from South America, they will come for revenge. But Carlos, getting a new job, will continue to protect his city. He reappeared in Daredevil Volume 2, Issues 112 to 115, where in this story, Black Tarantula is more of a supporting character. Black Tarantula one morning gets attacked by the Hand Ninjas while Lady Bullseye studies him. This is because the Hand and Lady Bullseye are testing him, studying him for their group. He was captured by Master Izo and brought to Matt Murdock's apartment. After some explanation, the group separated and Master Izo and Black Tarantula were tracked by a Hand Ninja. And later, Black Tarantula eventually meets White Tiger and other great martial artists. Carlos then led an attack against Daredevil at his home along with White Tiger, Lady Bullseye, and Lord Hiroshi. Daredevil was joined by Master Izo and Iron Fist and together they fought off the hand. Black Tarantula defeated Iron Fist but stopped White Tiger from killing him, giving the execute that he did not want the competition. Then in issue, he was in issues 118 and 119. Black Tarantula and White Tiger were next ordered to kill Foggy Nelson by Lady Bullseye, hired by the Owl. They are going after Franklin Nelson. Black Tarantula instead saved Foggy's life and then battled White Tiger, attempting to cure her of one of the hands of of the hands influence, which was turning her bad. He reappeared in Daredevil issue 500. Matt Murdock took over the leadership of the Hand. Black Tarantula became Matt Murdock's lieutenant alongside White Tiger, and Black Tarantula fights White Tiger again and wins now. Next came Daredevil Dark Reign: The List. Black Tarantula is here as a fighter with Daredevil to help him out. And then came Daredevil issues 501 to 504. With Daredevil being the leader and building Shadowland, Black Tarantula in the four issues is just another member of the hand now. Then his appearance in Shadowland issue 2 came along. Black Tarantula is one of the original members of the heroes from Shadowland, and that's it. Then Daredevil issue 510. As a Shadowland tie-in, Black Tarantula is shown here as just another hand member again. But, White Tiger was working for Kingpin all along and betrayed Carlos. Black Tarantula was informed by White Tiger to execute looters, but became confused seeing that something was wrong with Daredevil. White Tiger, still possessed by the hand, stabbed Black Tarantula in the back and tossed him over the edge of Shadowland to fall onto a vehicle, leaving him for dead. He was then in the book The Heroic Age Superheroes, ultimately labeling him as a hero now. September 2010, he was in Shadowland Issue 3. Black Tarantula is shown just in the fight continuing from the last issue. I kind of wish he and Spider-Man talked to each other again here, considering their history, but that did not happen. Next, Shadowland Power Man Issue 2, he was in, but it was just an easter egg. And then came his appearance in Daredevil Issue 512. We learn after White Tiger kicked Black Tarantula off a roof, the character named Night Nurse healed him, and he is recuperating right now. He was then in Deathlock Volume 5, Issue 1, October 2014. No, yeah, as you can see, ultimately Deathlock heads the Black Tarantula's old home and shoots him, but not killing him, apparently. He has a very small appearance here. He was next, a costume in the game, Spider-Man Unlimited. Later, he was in Power Man and Iron Fist, Volume 3, Issue 2. Black Tarantula has been hired by Tombstone to get an item Iron Fist and Power Man stole from him and Iron Fist beats him up one-on-one. -on -one. He made a cameo in Generation X, Volume 2, Issue 7. He was one of the many villains appearing in this story, and actually here, Black Tarantula kind of made me think that he kind of reminds me of Bane a little bit from Batman. Anyway, he actually finally then returned to Spider-Man in The Amazing Spider-Man, Volume 5, Issue 17. 
Black Tarantula had a cameo here, with all the other animal-themed supervillains appearing who Spider-Man has fought before as part of Kraven's hunted storyline. His last appearances to date were in the comic Contagion, issues 3-5 through 5, October 2019. Here, Black Tarantula is back to being a hero and helping New York City. And, uh-oh, he gets infected. And then he gets cured, being freed by your chains of control. Black Tarantula was nothing more than a supporting character in here. And now is everything about anything with the Black Tarantula up to July 2020, but I do know there's a second one, one who fights Spider-Girl, maybe someday there will be a video all about him, but I wanted to talk all about the first one, the main one. This was a great complete history of video, I actually learned a lot about the character, how he was built up as a great villain, but then shown to have a conscious and not a madman, then even became a superhero, fighting with Daredevil and protecting his city. I hate that they messed him up a bit with his last appearances, like he goes from hero to villain to hero again, but overall he is awesome, I wish more people knew about him. So with that said, this was the 2 year anniversary video for my complete history of series with this being number 13 on Black Tarantula. To be honest, I think they can make a great TV show about the guy. So thank you all for watching and have a great day.